My parents uh, were in the Victorian Scottish Union in the dancing because uh, my sister started when she was three and a half. God love her, she was only as big as a peanut. Uh, and one day I was sitting at home and Dad had said to me, son, why don't you learn a musical instrument? And I said to him, oh, don't know what I'll learn. And he said, well, what about the piano accordion? I said, oh, yeah, well, that'd be all right. Anyway, I was sitting up on, on the bench listening to the, the wireless one Sunday morning and a pipe band came on. And I said to Dad, that's what I'd like to learn. If I started when I was about nine and a half. Oh yeah, it was hard. Um, mainly because in those days we, we started off and went through every exercise before we got a tune. Whereas today, uh, our teaching is totally different. I mean, we can have kids playing tunes within about three or four weeks but it used to take us ending up to a couple of years before we got a tune. But you had to be pretty dedicated because it was pretty boring, you know. But <laughs> once, you got your, once you got the music, uh, you were on your way then, you know. Uh, and then you had about half a dozen tunes and then the pipe major would give you a set of pipes. Now for 12 months, I couldn't get a squeak out of them. Not a squeak. My dad and my uncle used to blow them up and squeeze the bag like hell while I tried to play something on the chanter. And then mum said to me one day, you know what's wrong? She said, there's holes in the bag, in the cover, in the tartan cover. So she sat there for hours stitching all the little, hole, little holes in the cover. And, uh, and about a week later, I hit them up, never looked back. Oh, I think there were about six or seven of us that um, all started around about the same time. And I was probably the slowest. But once I got the pipes going, it was look out, you know. <laughs> I wasn't the slowest then. Yeah. Initially, uh, I decided that I wanted to do solo. And uh, for a couple of the competitions, I chickened out. It was at Geelong. And, and this year, I, one year, I thought, no, nah, I'm going to have a go. So I didn't tell anybody. And I, uh, I went to one of the chaps that was in charge of the solo, and I said, look, I've never done this before, I want to play today, what do I do? Well, he just took me under his wing and, and uh, organised a fellow by the name of Bill Brown to, to tune my pipes, and, uh, and I played Scotland the Brave, that was my first tune, and, uh, and I got a third, which I was over the moon, but I didn't say anything to anybody, and, it, and we were on the ground uh, for presentations for the band comp and they, they announced the winners of the solo competitions and uh, when my name come up well you know they all just went mad they, they just didn't even realize that I'd done it well I, I, I did a rough estimate and in my 54 years conservatively I'd have done about 40,000 hours of practice and I mean if if you weren't on your game, uh, you could end up winning one month and the next month you could come last. And I can remember that uh, I'd been winning pretty consistently and you tend to get a bit cocky. So I, <laughs> I didn't put a lot of work in because they were winter comps. You, we went for about five months every month. We went to Melbourne. And I can remember, remember this day I went down there and I was underprepared. Um, and the judge really got stuck into me. And, you know, he said he was very disappointed in my performance. So I thought, well, I'll fix you. So the next month I, you know, went like Billy Owen, practised three times a day and uh, went back and I won it. And he came up and apologised to me. He said, Les, maybe I shouldn't have put that on. I said, it was the greatest thing you ever did. I said, I was getting too smart and <laughs> nice to come back to the field. Yeah, but uh, no, I won a lot of championships. So I was very successful in solo, yeah. In the band, uh, you draw a lot of confidence from your mates around you. Um, so uh, it's, it's much easier. Um, if you're doing solo, I mean, you're it. So if your pipes are not tuned properly or you're not on your, on your game, uh, you've only got to make a mistake and that's the end. You may as well 
stop playing and walk off uh, because you won't win. Okay, well that's me. As you can see, I was only a little weed. I was 14 years old when this was taken. Uh, and you can see by the outfits that uh, we wore heavy jackets and they were buttoned right up, clipped up to the neck. We had plaids, hair sporans, white spats. Uh, crazy outfits for Australian conditions. They're right in Scotland, but nowadays, you know, we're much more comfortable. We've got short sleeve shirts and uh, and leather sporans uh, and much, much, much more comfortable. But my first play out with the band was at uh, Maribor on New Year's Day. We used to have to march down the street and, and it was about 110 in the shade and, oh boy, was it hot. And I just about had it by the time we got to the end. But all part of the job. Being an ex-pipe major, I know how hard it is, but... Anyway, so of course everybody practiced like mad and you're thinking, oh, I hope he doesn't drop me. So anyway, we're lined up and he said, he told this fella that he, he wasn't going to play. I thought, oh, beauty, you know, I'll be, I'll be right now. We get out on the field uh, and the drum major says, band, quick march. The drums come in, go to hit my pipes, miss the hit up. Ugh. So I thought, well... I can't hit up because as soon as you take your hand off the chanter, you can be disqualified. So I just pretended for the whole performance. And when it come off, everybody's, you know, tapping me on the back. You've done a wonderful job. You've done a wonderful job, Blair. Well, I never told anybody for probably 15 or 20 years. And I can remember telling Billy Spicer just before he died, actually. I said, Bill, do you know, we played in Adelaide at the Australian Championships. And that was my first Australian Championship. He said, yeah, yeah. I said, well, do you realise that I missed the hit up? You didn't. I said, yeah, yeah. I ne never played a note. And nobody picked it. Even the judges didn't pick it. So I must have done a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the only time I've ever missed the hit up. You know, in 50 odd years and was the only time, yeah. So I retired two years ago, but I'm still a member of the band. I'm still a live member. And I love the band side of it. It was great, yeah. This photo here is uh, our, our first Australian Championship success. In 1994, it was the first full year that we, we had amalgamated uh, and very, very exciting. We, we, we played at Geelong and uh, we come off and said, well, that was great. At the presentations, we didn't even get a place. We're absolutely dumbfounded. Couldn't work out what, what was going on. Uh, so we went back and consoled ourselves, very disappointed. We thought we'd done extremely well. And then somebody come running up and said, oh, you've won it, you've won it. We made a mistake with the additions. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we won it quite easily. We, we, we were a very, very good band. It's a challenge. I would say it's probably one of the most difficult instruments to, to master. Uh, uh, maybe I shouldn't say master because I was still learning even when I retired. It, look, it's wonderful. It, it's, uh, I've played at hundreds of weddings, I've played at hundreds of funerals, birthday parties. Uh, so you can, you, know, you can use the instrument to, uh, to communicate with people. Uh, no, I, I've, I've had a wonderful time. It was excellent. Yeah.